don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome also to another Mixed Media Saturday Hangout with me. So today I want to create another 6x6 Mixed Media canvas using some MDF pieces, some uh, resin. Oh, hello Mr Bentley. Hello. <laughs> you come to say hello? <laughs> oh, I want to play in a second. I'll be there in a second. Okay. Go find Teddy, who oh, there he is. Um, so mixed media pieces, so some MDF shapes and some cast resin pieces, including the Finnebear Queens of Steam um, figure, or one of the Queens of Steam figures that I showed you in one of my vlogs the other day. So I'm going to be using one of those in the composition too. So let me turn over to my other camera because this is probably going to take a good few hours for me because I'm going to do it the long route today, not the short route using the glue gun, but we're going to use um, the soft gel medium today. So it's going to take a little bit longer, which is why I've started early, because it's only nine o'clock this morning. On Saturday morning, it's only nine o'clock. So this will probably take me a good two to three hours. So let's turn over and let's get started. So one of the other reasons why it's probably going to take quite a few hours to do this project is because I'm going to have to keep breaking off <laughs> to play with Mr Bentley because we're on our own today so there's nobody else. Um, it's just me and him. So Ian's away at a steampunk event in the lovely town of Goal which is going over towards the east coast of the country. Not too far away from here, it's just a few miles, um, probably about 30 miles or so, east, northeast. Um, going up towards Hull and the Humber, so that's where he is today. So this is why I've got the full day um, of peace and quiet in which to play. Apart from if you count Mr Bentley, of course. Right, so on with this project then. So I've got the canvas, which you can probably still see it's shiny, which means it's still got its wrapper on. So I've just laid out the, um, the canvas in a kind of mock composition as to where I think I want everything to go, um, but it is all dry look. I can just take it all to pieces so everything's just been laid down as it is and I have taken a photograph of it as it is now so that I can refer back to it later on uh, on my telephone if necessary um, so that I can remember where everything is um, and where everything I wanted to go so there you go so there's the photo <laughs> don't know if you can see it properly but yeah so there's the photograph that I took just before starting the filming so that I know where everything wants to be. So that's a good idea to do that, particularly if you've spent ages um, on a composition, trying to get everything right. And then as soon as you start taking it to pieces again, you've forgotten where things went. So of course, that's not going to be the only bits of decoration um, because I am going to be doing a little bit of stenciling in the background too, but I'll tell you what stencil I'm going to be using in a little while. Okay, so now that I've got the photograph, I've got my um, soft gel medium, in this case it's the super thick Slap It On from Indigo Blue and it is super thick as you can see. I'm hoping that it's not too bright for the camera um, but it is that thick look. You can hold the pot upside down and none of it falls out so um, it's jolly jolly thick. And I do have somewhere, or I did have somewhere, uh, a little plastic spatula. Um, but I don't know what I've done with it. I've put it down somewhere. Anyway, let me just grab a couple of others. There we go. So I've got some more there. So I'm going to be using those as well. Um, it doesn't matter what spatula you use, whether it's plastic or metal or whatever. Right, so I think I'm ready to start doing the project that I wanted to do in the first place. Right, so let's just get rid of all that. So this is the canvas. It's a six by six um, pre-gessoed canvas but even though it's pre-gessoed I probably will add some more onto it. So let's just take the wrapper off. There we go. Let me just pop that in the bin. All right so let's just make a pile of all the bits that we want now that we know where everything wants to go. So these little MDF shapes under here 
Right, so these are offcuts. These are actually waste. Um, they're from a project that I will be sharing with you probably mid-May sometime um, because I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm planning ahead for once. So these are offcuts. So these are actually bits that you would normally throw away and I thought they're too big and too nice to do that. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a background of these with them staggered going up and down but I'm going to stay within the confines of the canvas I'm not going to take them out of the canvas so this is pretty much kind of like where they're going to go and I've got just enough to kind of fit in a kind of upsy downsy kind of pattern with a little bit of gap in between each one so I'm going to try and evenly space them all out so once they're down uh, I'm then going to stencil a pattern over the top with the gel medium so what I'm going to do is just count up how many there are so there was four lovely there's seven which means it's an it's an odd number, which means I can place my first one pretty much in the middle of the canvas, and then I can start working my way outwards at even spaces. So let me just grab some gel medium, and then we can just start adding it to the back. It's literally just a case of buttering the back, and then laying it down. Now I could have measured but of course me being me I didn't think about that but there you go you see I'm just over a little bit to the left so I need to move a little bit to the right to get it in the middle so let's just try that nearly there if it wants to move just a little bit further to the right I'm just going to squeeze that down. Now what I could do as well is I could just put something underneath just to stop it from flexing. Look, even though we've only just opened the canvas up, I've already got some schmutz on it. Never mind. Right, so where are we now? That's near enough. It's near enough. I'm not going to lose any sleep over the fact that I've got just a little sticking out. So this time a little bit on the back and this is the, the type of gel medium that um, will also dry totally clear so even if you get a little squidge out it's fine it'll disappear it'll go transparent but you can always just do a scrape down the side just to remove any any excess if you want so next one, let's hold this out a little bit along there. It's unusual for, um, for me to have a full day in which to play. I'm totally unhurried, I don't have to rush. I've got no particular kind of um, deadline that I need to hit as long as this gets completed and finished and the video can get edited and to go live this evening for Saturday night it's great but it literally means I've just got all day to play um, Ian left very very early this morning he left um, about 7am and of course I'd already got out of bed um, so let me just refer back to that photograph a moment just want to have a quick look at whereabouts I'd kind of placed those um, MDF pieces. So I think that one wants to go up there a little bit. And then the next one needs to come right down here. That's fine. And so we need to add two more pieces at either side. So that one needs to come down. That one can go up there a little like that. And then at this side, I can go right up there, and that one can come right down here, like so. 
So that doesn't kind of look like it's evenly spaced either, does it? So let's just move that over a little bit. Yeah, sometimes it's best to do things by eye. <laughs> just to kind of get that even. There we go. Pretty happy with that. Okay, um, what was I saying? Yeah, Ian left at about 7 o'clock this morning, so um, I had got up already, um, obviously to see him off. Um, and I thought, well, there's actually no point in going back to bed. So I stayed up, um, and then all my domestic chores that I wanted to do today, like laundry and that kind of stuff, I did um, straight away. And then, of course, that meant um, I was free to walk Mr Bentley earlier. So we went out at about 8am this morning for our WALK. And we were, that also meant that we are also able to stay out a little bit longer. So we actually went a little bit further. Um, and we had a little run. Well, he did. <laughs> plenty of binkies so a binky if you're not familiar is kind of like a short burst of energy where we'll possibly run around in circles and chase his own kind of tail and then come running back again so that's what we call a binky momentary um, five minutes of madness and then when we got back onto the estate um, obviously we've got the green in front of the house so I'll let him off his lead there making sure of course that there was no um, other dogs or, or children or anything out but it was still too early um, and I'll let him off his lead and we had another little run so I got him to run around in massive circles on the green as well and then when he'd had enough he, um, he literally just ran off the green and went to the front door so when we came back in, he had his breakfast and then I had five minutes rest and then he was back to playing with Teddy again. So one of those kind of busy days today. <laughs> and like I said, it was only just nine o'clock and I sat down and started recording this. So. But that's good, that's good. It just means we can do things, like I said, the old fashioned way and not the way that I would just normally do for ease and speed for the video or for creating a, a, a video to go onto YouTube. I mean, the new glue gun that Ian bought me for Christmas is absolutely fantastic and that glue really does hold um, and doesn't really melt again okay yeah it doesn't really melt again when it gets hot so that's perfect just just like that okay so what I need to do is I need to leave that just to dry a little bit now I can encourage it to dry uh, by using the heat gun um, and just get it to kind of like hold and sit on there so that it's stable enough to me to be able to stencil over the top. I will be adding two more pieces, cross pieces, um, but I'll show you what I'm going to do with those in a little while. Um, using a heat gun on MDF is not usually a good idea because if it gets warm it can release some nasty gases. Um, but this isn't MDF, it's Medite, and it's got an extremely low formaldehyde content, so you can actually heat it, and it doesn't kind of like make a smell like some MDF does. So, we can encourage. Sometimes, actually, it's best to do it from the back. So if you can, do it from the back of your canvas. You're still heating the gel, sorry. You're still heating the gel medium and it's still drying quicker, but you're not doing it directly on. It's actually doing from underneath, if you know what I mean.
but I'm going to leave mine to dry au naturel. So, because I've got the luxury, that one is pretty much stuck. Once you've got all your gubbins on here, you're not really going to gubbins. It's great weather, isn't it? Um, you're not really going to see it too much because it is going to be in the background, but you know, still want to try and get it as neat and tidy as I possibly can. Right, okay, so I'm going to leave that. The time is now 11 minutes past nine in the morning, Saturday the 9th of April. So I'll be back in about half an hour. Um, and that should have set enough for me to be able to stencil over the top. See you in a little while. Mr. Bentley's now fast asleep as well. But I've got a coffee, so I'm okay. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. Um, it's drying quite nicely. What I thought I would do is I'd prep, I'd prep the next piece. So I've got four more pieces of those offcuts, and I've just pushed them together, and I've just got a, a piece of some stencil tape. So this is just low tack like masking tape um, that you'd probably use for painting but it's also really good just for holding stencils down um, because it's low tack it'll hold but it doesn't grip too firmly so you can just peel it off again um, so I've just taped those four pieces together I'm only going to use two but I've put four just because well, just because I can really. Um, and I've got this stencil. So let me just pop that one down. Just zoom out just a little bit. There you go. So you can see the full extent of it. So this, um, I've been trying to design or, or make a damask stencil for absolutely months. Um, and I've had so many attempts at creating a design. Um, when I've prototyped it, it's not worked, it's been too flimsy, it's been too intricate, it's been too, pieces have been too thin. Um, and then at a recent trip down to my friends at Indigo Blue, um, I noticed they had a 6x6 damask, what, she, what was called damaged damask, with this as the main piece. And it, it's, it was huge, it was massive like that. But looking at the design, I thought that would be perfect to do smaller. Um, so I stole the design from them. Um, with their permission, obviously, and then I've shrunk it down and done it on a five and a half by eight. Um, and then obviously, as a thank you to them for allowing me to use their design, um, I'm also going to allow them to um, to use it. And they can then sell this design as well on their website too, which is what we've been doing in a kind of partnership kind of way with some of my older designs with them. Um, so, I've taped those four pieces of the Medite down and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some of the um, gel medium through the stencil onto those Medite strips. So I'm going to grab that stencil tape, I'm going to hold that down, I'm going to put some at the bottom as well just to kind of keep it in place. I don't mind if it's a little bit skew whiff, a little bit on the wonk. And I'm going to take some of the gel medium, pick it up, and I'm going to just scrape that through because you can also stencil with this stuff. And when it dries, it obviously dries completely clear, so you're left with this fantastic pattern um, which is totally transparent or let's say 90% translucent anyway and of course the more you put on <laughs> now obviously the only drawback is you've got to make sure that you clean your stencil and your spatula straight away afterwards because if you leave this stuff on and you forget to clean it, once it dries, you ain't ever going to get it off. 
So there you go. So I can now lift that stencil off. There you go. And because, let's put that down there. I'm not in any imminent danger of it drying just yet. Because we've gone over, gone off the edge there, then all we have to do is literally just scrape up the excess. There we go. And I've done the pattern horizontally. Don't forget, the ones that I've used are all vertical. Just remember that. Just remember that. If you can. I've just knocked one of the MDF pieces that was dry in the dope. There we go. Okay, so we need to leave that to dry. I need to tidy this up and then I will be back and clean that up as well. Um, and I'll be back probably 20 minutes to half an hour-ish. Okay, so <clears throat> it's been a few minutes. It's now 9.25. As you can see, that gel medium is now drying on those. It started to go a little bit more translucent, but not quite dry yet. But these are dry enough so that they're not going to move when I stencil over the top. So I'm going to bring back that damask stencil. So this is now being cleaned and washed. Um, did I mention, I can't remember whether I mentioned that this is going to be another one of the May releases along with the, um, the clocks. Just in case you were wondering. Right, so I've left the spatula in the bathroom, but that's okay, I did have a sparesy. So we'll grab the gel medium again. Yeah. Right, and we'll grab some more of that. Drop it down, and then I'm going to stencil. I don't need to hold the stencil with any tape on this one. So I'm just going to drag that down the actual uh, MDF sticks. And like I said before, most of this probably won't be seen in the final canvas, but that's not the point. I know it's there. <laughs> it's kind of like mixed media underwear. You don't see it, it's not visible. But you know it's there. There we go. And you can see, because it's kind of whitish in colour, you can see where you've missed. And of course, I am going to get some. And um, that's gone down the cracks in between the sticks. But that's alright. Because we can clean those out with a little brush in a little while. Yeah, that'll do. I'm not going to go overboard. I is happy with that. Ta-da! Okay, so I'll just pop that down there, grab the brush, and then we can just very gently just run it, get some tissue. Not too bothered if it comes up over the side. I could leave it because when it actually sets it'll just hold those pieces anyway but I like to think that it's got that break it's just me just one of those uh, little quirks I like to make sure that if I'm doing stuff like this I want those gaps Lovely. You can see that's getting even more so now. It's 
gone a little bit more milky. Now the problem with stuff like this is sometimes it dries on the surface which then seals it which means that the stuff that's underneath that surface layer, that surface skin is no longer exposed to the air so it doesn't dry as quickly and therefore stays milky but it's just one of them things. Okay so going to leave this to dry so like I said 925 um, I'm going to clean that stencil off, clean the spatula off and then probably about a quarter of an hour or so. Um, so it'll probably be about 20 to 10 when I get back and we'll see what stage we're at before we move on to the next step. Okay so it's now 9.38 so almost 20 to 10. Um, as you can see that one on the side there. It's been about half an hour for that. So that's nearly all kind of like gone transparent. It's not very thick, I mean it's not ultra dimensional, but that's fine. I don't want it in your face. I just want a little bit of detail in the background. And the one that was on the canvas, you can already see that it started to go quite nicely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put those to one side for now pop those safe, oh, I just knocked the light and then I'm going to just bring in some of these um, the MDF piece and the cast resin pieces. Now I don't normally um, pre-gesso when I'm making a canvas because I find it easy just to stick it all down on mass and then paint it all but sometimes it's necessary. Now because I want to have all this covered in the black gesso first um, it would be better if I painted some of these pieces before sticking them on because I'll paint this and then I'm going to paint these and then I can stick them down when they're already pre-painted if that makes sense rather than sticking them all down and then hoping that your object your paint's going to get in all those nooks and crannies it's, it's all a question of layers I think but again, it depends on speed. It depends on how quickly, or uh, how much time you've got, and how much time you want to invest in sitting and doing um, doing one of the canvases. Right, so brushes. Let's have a look. Where's my gesso brush? There it is. I know it's my gesso brush because it's already got remnants of it on. That'll do. And I'm gonna use Indigo Blue black gesso just because I've used indigo blue um, slap it on so I might as well just carry on and use the gesso too all right so we may need I doubt we'll need any more than one coat for the the medite because with it being wood or made from wood product, it should be okay. Now the medite is actually designed um, for interior home use, for like bathroom panels and that kind of thing. So, um, is kind of resistant to water, which means that it's absolutely perfect for painting. Now some wood pro products, when you paint them, they start to lift and they blow a little bit. Um, some MDF does that, some low density fibre boards and, and some medium density fibre boards do the same thing, but not this one. This is designed for just such an application. So you do get a good kind of coverage. Okay, so the wings were cast in gold resin, well, copper resin if you like. It's not a paint, so, but the gesso will cover quite nicely. But we will be adding more colour to these anyway, so the gesso is a perfect ground or primer 
it gives the paint a tooth, particularly when you've got a non-porous surface like the resin, um, it gives your paint or gives it a tooth in which for the paint to grab hold of as opposed to you know a totally smooth surface where it hasn't really got anything right, now then I just need to hold on to that where's my twist errors there we go I'll do I'll just hold those in place and that just allows me then just to get into all that detail without losing any of it. Okay, let's bring the other wing. Now when I'm painting like resin wings, I try and follow the lines that are in the wings so that if you go over the top, you just, I don't know whether you can see that, like if you dry brush it, if you go over the top, you see all you're doing is catching the tops and not getting into the, so the raised pieces, you're not getting into the the valleys. If you go along with it, you can get right the way in. Okay, so I'm going to continue to do the same thing with all these other pieces, just give them all one single coat of the black gesso, just as a, a kind of primer base. So there's no point in you sitting there watching me paint everything black. You've seen it done with the two wings and the MDF it don't get no more interesting than what you've already seen I'm afraid and it literally is watching paint dry so once again I'll disappear off I'll carry on painting all these individual pieces and then I'll be back once that gel medium base is dry and all of these resin pieces are all painted black so see you in a little while okay so it's now 10 a.m. so the gesso pieces are all done all dry so they can be put to one side and obviously I have had to tidy up and clean up so this is the piece that we did earlier on um, with that gel medium uh, and as you can see it's 90% or 95% transparent now um, so it's dry enough for me to be able to take off the tape now because we did the gel medium over the top as one single piece it's it's still stuck together so what I've got to do is I've got to just very gently just crack it open now then if I had a if I got a scalpel here now oh, there's one there we go <clears throat> bit of surgical precision going on if I just run my scalpel that's it just down There we go. Just create a little bit of an opening so we can get the blade in because it does set. And don't worry, I have made sure my fingers <laughs> not in the way at the back. There we go. Perfect. Okay. I'll put that away. So, two of those I don't really need. And then I can just go around the edges, just taking off, just scraping off any excess with my nail. But like I said, they're going to be hidden practically anywhere. So I'm doing this and it's, and you're probably not even going to be able to see them. So those are the two pieces that I'm going to use. Just catch the light there so you can see the shininess of them. Ah, 
Okay, so the canvas itself, there you go. So that's pretty much dry. And don't forget, we, we only did that at about 10 past nine. So it's only been about 50 minutes. So what I need to do now, what I want to do now, is to stick those down onto there. So all I'm going to do is just going to grab a little bit more of that gel medium, and of course I left all of my spatulas in the bathroom. Hey, what am I like, eh? All right, okay. So we'll have to we'll have to improvise. I know what we'll do. We'll use a brush. We'll use a brush. I've got some brushes here, just sitting in some water. Okay, that'll do. So that's what I need. So I'll take some from there and we'll just dot and dab so onto the back that's going to be enough to hold it in place so I want to make sure that I get it the right way up same way yep yeah, that's fine so if I put that about there just squidge it down and then do the same thing the back of this one just butter the back a little bit there we go that should do us now you can use brushes for this kind of thing as long as you wash them straight away afterwards they'll be fine now I just want to make sure I've got that the right way up that's the right way up and then I'm going to bring that one over to this side and drop it down about there now then again this is going to be underneath so you're probably not going to see much of it anyway but that's fine all right happy with that so again I'm now going to leave that just long enough for it to set so that it's not going to move. So we're only talking, what, 10, 15 minutes probably, and then I'll be right back. It'll give me a chance to finish my coffee, which is now cold. Mm. I think I'll go and stick it in the microwave. All right, I'll see you in a little while. God, blimey, this chair really is getting on my nerves. I know, and I keep saying that, and I never do anything about it. Anyway, so it's now quarter to 11. And they're now dry enough for me to be able to paint these in the black gesso. So I've got black gesso, I've got two brushes, just in case. So now I can just start to add the paint all the way around. So everything's now dry enough for it not to move, which is just perfect. So I can now just use the brush to get into all little nooks and crannies. And again, it's just straightforward painting with black paint in nothing miraculous. So that now you've seen me start it <laughs> I'll just crack on get it done and then when it's dried I'll be right back okay so we've now gessoed a couple of times so you can see that texture just I'm hoping the camera's focusing um, you can see that texture in the background just there Canvas is still a little bit warm where I use the heat gun. So now that we've got that done, we can now start to place our pieces down onto the canvas. So I'm making sure I've got the 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, um, towards the top. And I think I'm gonna have it just coming over the edge of the canvas just a tiny tiny bit so 
back in with the super thick slap it on so this is the soft gel medium and I've got my spatula back from the bathroom so all I'm going to do now is just start adding some little pieces onto the back so I don't want huge amounts I don't need kind of huge amounts of this you just need enough to be able to catch it to hold it in place don't like I said don't worry too much about if any of it squidges through because a um, it'll disappear and go transparent and B you can always just wipe it off with a brush afterwards so you know what's the phrase I'm looking for don't sweat it that's the one right so place you down about there Okay, so that's the first bit. So this is when I need to refer back to the photograph that I took earlier so that I can see where I placed everything. So if I just stand my telephone up there, I can see at a glance pretty much. Now, you see I've made changes already because in the original the clock wasn't over the edge so I've changed that a little bit now so I've got more room up here that's fine okay so large cog wants to go about there so stick some of that on the back so all I'm doing is just kind of buttering let me just move that lid so it's more closer to me down here that way I don't have to reach and stretch so far and I see I've changed my mind again so I'm pushing it further, further back again that's it so only because I want to be able to see some of those numbers showing through I'll do about there. It's okay. That will hold. Okay, so we've got that one, and then we had this one down at the bottom, and that's where Madam's going to sit. So if I just drop her down there and there, that's okay. But, 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 but yeah, let's have that bit at the bottom. So again, let me just drop her back down. And I can position. I'm probably being a bit OCD with this, but that's okay. We don't mind that. Okay, now the wings. I can put a fair bit on the back of that. So let's drop her into position and then I can tuck those wings just like that. So now I've got that one in place. So we are going to get one of the wings sticking over the side of the canvas, which is good, which is what I wanted. A bit dollop under there, that's okay. Right, so if we do it like so, and then just drop her down again, what I can do is just use her just to get the balance right for the gap on the wings. And it's probably difficult to see, that's it. I think I've got the balance I think I've got the balance right for the wings there. Right, so now that that's in place there. I can add my gel medium at the base 
and at the top. Just stick a little bit in the middle as well. Just because there we go. Just gonna scrape that spatula a little bit and just take a little bit off. I can just see it on the edge. I can get a brush and just remove some of those excess bits. Okay, I'm just twist that cog a little. That's it, just so there's a hole at the top. And I can twist that around just to make sure I've got those even holes at the bottom just there. Again, I'm being a little bit OCD with it, but that's fine. Don't mind that at all. Lovely, okay. So we've got those, I can start adding my kind of counterbalance piece over here. But when I say counterbalance, what I mean is most of the composition is over here on the left hand side. So I need something over here just to kind of balance it a little bit. Just to give this side of the canvas this bit down here, a little bit of weight if you like. Okay, so we've got that. So we'll add another little cogette. Just there. And I'm just balancing them on the edge of the MDF clock because that's the perfect kind of place to pop them. Let me have another cog here. That will hold in place just nicely. And then we've got another one that I'm going to add just here. Now, theoretically, that should fit underneath, but I don't think it's going to because the thickness of these are not uniform. But that's okay, we can work with that. And then a dollop on there. And I'm going to place that one on top of these two just to give that a bit more extra dimension. So now we've got one, two, three, four layers. And now I've got my first screw heads, which are here. So I want to add this large one, which is just a slot screw head onto that piece of the MDF there. And like I said, we will be losing a lot of that pattern that we'd use with this stencil. And then I'm gonna take one of these homemade screw heads and I'm gonna stick that just down at the bottom, just there. Another one, and that's gonna go up at the top, so that's going to go up here in that gap between the clock face and that piece of MDF. And then I've got two little ones, two little slot headed ones. Well, this one's a little slot headed one, so I'm going to put that one just on that MDF there. And then there's another tiny little cross-headed screw, just a teeny tiny one. And I'm going to place that just at a slight offset angle, just to kind of create a little bit of a, um, a cluster there. And I think that's probably, it's different to what my original um, plan was but it's still intrinsically there. So we can now put 
the gel medium to one side, clean the spatula and we can let that sit and set. But before we do that, we need to grab a teeny tiny brush and then we can start removing any of that excess gel where we don't want it. And just gently with your brush. But don't forget, it will dry clear and shiny. So we'll have to go back again with a little bit of gesso. Once this is actually grabbed and taken hold. You don't have to take it off if you don't want to, you can just leave it. But I find it, it just adds a few splodges. It just looks like bad welding <laughs> if you're trying to do like a, a steampunky piece. But this isn't really, I suppose it is steampunky, but. I'd obviously put far too much gel medium under that bit, but that's okay. It's all squidged out. Just bring it off. That's it. It's just coming off. Learn to let go, Mike. Learn to let go. Right, that's it. <laughs> Brush in the water. And I'm going to leave that to set. Right, what time is it now? According to the clock on my telephone, it is... There we go. It's quarter past 11. Okay, I'm going to leave this now until after lunch. So I've got a couple of little domestic jobs that I need to do. Mr. Bentley's taking himself off to bed, so he's okay. Um, I've, like I said, I've got a few little domestic chores to attend to. Um, and I need to eat. So I'm gonna leave that sitting there and then I'll be back after lunch and we'll start to add some color. Okay, it is now approximately, oh, <clears throat> clear that out of the way. Don't want to worry about my messages, do you? All right, so it's now quarter to one in the afternoon. So I did say this was gonna take all day. You've just seen me drying off the uh, a little bit of gesso that I've put back on and um, where the gel medium had dried and it was all shiny I've just kind of uh, put a little bit of a coat of, um, of gesso over it just to kind of give it that dull effect. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just lay down some tissue there we go. Just underneath, I'm going to start adding some colour. So, colour-wise, um, recently I've been looking at um, pages that I've done and also things that I'm finding interesting at the moment. Um, and I've been looking at some kind of like old picture frames and old um, furniture that had been gilded. So gold leaf, that kind of thing. But underneath, they've all had like a, a red oxide paint. And that's kind of like been sticking in the back of my mind recently. So I thought today I'm going to create this canvas, primarily red as my main colour. So I've pulled out my Scarlet uh, Artist Acrylic Inks uh, and this is what I'm going to use for the basis of this canvas. So first of all I'm going to add some red ink all over And then I'm going to loosen it all up and let it run backwards and forwards all over the place. So I'm pretty much going to give it a decent coat. And 
and these pipettes are not really all that good. Yeah, I think we've reached the, the point now where it's too low down in the jar to actually pick any up or pick much up. So I'm going to have to use brushes. So well, I'm going to need a thinner brush than that. Oh, oh God, I've got one here. That's fine. We can start to add the red colour into the background. Let it soak everywhere. So this is different to how I've normally done canvases in the past, but that's fine. Stepping also outside our comfort zone or outside my comfort zone anyway. Okay, so let's grab some water. There we go. And this is the reason why I put it on these tissues. <laughs> let's start loosening this up. And I just turn it in all different directions. There we go. So first layer. Okay. Change of plan. The De La Rowney acrylic ink doesn't appear to be covering as I thought it would, which is fine. Well, it's not fine because it's not what I wanted. Um, so I'm going to have to change tactic. So I'll just clear that up because it looks like a bloodbath. <laughs> Put that in the bin so instead let's go from one extreme to the other and go red acrylic paint instead let's go red acrylic paint right so paintbrush just quickly give that a wash off that's it, and then quick clean. And then I'm going to take the red paint. So this is just neat red acrylic. So this is Deco Art. So Deco Art uh, Americana Cherry Red. So this hopefully will give me that kind of coverage that I was kind of hoping for. And I'm putting it on neat. Because I kind of wanted a more of a matte kind of effect. And that acrylic ink just didn't seem to cut the mustard. So let's get all the way in as far as we can into all those little nooks and crannies. Okay peeps, so in future when I'm doing a canvas like this can you remind me before I embark on a before I actually start it, can you remind me to check how translucent a paint is on a, back, a black background before I actually embark or start the actual canvas itself? That's just taken about four coats <laughs> to, 
just to get it to look like that just to get it to look the way that I kind of wanted it, that kind of opaqueness on it so I've dried it off with the heat gun um, and it's still warm so I want to leave it for a little while before I start adding on some gold highlights so my idea of one of those vintage um, frames or vintage wooden kind of piece of furniture that's been gilded and it's all started to come away and you can see that red uh, red oxide paint underneath right that's where I am now so this is still way way too hot to start adding any wax to it so I'm going to leave it for now um, and then come back in a little while make myself a cup of coffee um, but obviously for you it's going to be just a second or two it's cooled down enough for me to be able to work in some of that wax so I'm going to be using the Sizzix Luster Wax and this is obviously in gold so I've got my brush I'm just going to work that gold in and then I'm just going to gently just start going across the tops now to get into the eyes a little there you go you see that's what I was after that's the sort of effect that I wanted so you can still see the red underneath the gold is predominant there we go that's that's what I was yes 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 you can see that initial first bit of disappointment <laughs> dealt with Remember what I said about going into the, um, the the wings, go against the brush. If you want to get in them, go with the flow. If you want to go on top, just go against. So we're still getting to see the red colour. Still a little bit of movement. It's not the um, gel medium isn't yet 100% dry, even though it's had quite a while. Right, I'm going to get a smaller brush. I kind of want to get inside. That's it. Still a bit wet in there. 
Never mind. Just a little bit on the brush. I think maybe just a tad more down that side there just to pick out that damask stencil so you can just see it on the edge there but I think I'm very very happy with that I think. Let's add a bit more onto that brush. Just pick up a bit more on the canvas itself. the wings. And as with everything else it's just about knowing when to say an egg's an egg. By that I mean enough enough. <laughs> there we go. I think I'm going to call that a day. So there you go. There is my um, gilded if you like little mini steampunky art decoy kind of frame because obviously the Egyptian kind of lady there is very very art deco but of course with the steampunk elements as well but yeah I'm happy with that and I hope you enjoyed watching me create that canvas too um, and I hope it was worth the wait in the end because <laughs> I know it's been a long video <laughs> that's all for me for now I'll see you all again very very soon Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.